Raider Nation, today is an exciting day because, well, two days ago was. Um, the Raiders have begun football again in the 2021 season, and they started out with a 20-7 to victory in preseason game number one against Seattle Seahawks. Now, preseason is always tough, always tough to dive into, to analyze, because a lot of the guys you're watching aren't going to be playing. And a lot of them, if they do make the team, aren't going to be putting in significant amounts of time. But then again, you do see guys that are going to be playing and are going to be putting in significant amount of time. So before we get into the actual game here, I just want to say first and foremost, thank you guys for watching. Do us a favor while you're watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel below, and also comment below on your thoughts of the preseason game. I know a lot of people didn't get to see it live, like myself. Um, you know, I had to go on NFL Network or bootleg it or stuff like that, which sucks about preseason, but that's, as they say, is life. All right, so you can't really be too upset about it, but you can be upset about it if you understand what I'm saying. So, first and foremost, let's get through the actual scoring and all that. Um, like I said, the Raiders won 20 to seven. It was at it was in Vegas. Um, in the first quarter, uh, Regas scored a one-yard rushing touchdown on fourth down. Then Eberle put in two field goals in the second quarter to make it 13-0. to zero. Then Dallas got a 43-yard receiving touchdown, total blown coverage for Seattle. Um, he literally caught it out of the backfield, and there was no one there, and no one can catch him. And uh, he ran it in from 43 yards out. Blown coverage, big time. But when you're getting into the third quarter, the of the first preseason game, you're probably not going to see too many of those people playing on the team um, coming September. So can't be too, too upset with that. And then the fourth quarter, the Raiders put a staple into it, and uh, Emmons scored a two-yard rushing touchdown as well. Uh, not too upset with the outcome, obviously, with a W. Um, you know, John, John Gruden looked like he won the Super Bowl from the first, from the, the walk from the sideline to the locker room in the first half. Okay, enjoy the enthusiasm, John, but they do well in the preseason every year. It seems like the Raiders always do well in the preseason every year, especially with him as a coach. I only think they've lost a couple games in the four seasons he's been there. Um, or three seasons, I'm sorry. I'm so confused right now. But still, the enthusiasm from John Gruden from the sideline running into the locker room uh, was... Fuck it, let's just say it, it can be somewhat, like, contagious. Like, let's have that enthusiasm. Let's, let's, let's have that enthusiasm from our coaching staff. All right, let's, let's do that because the Raiders are on one of those teams that could be on the verge of just getting over that hump and being very solid and competitive every game or digressing and becoming, you know, 6-10 and 10 to, to 1-15, and 15, which I doubt, but... It has to be said. Um, notable Raiders stats: Nathan Peterman played the whole game, uh, threw for a hundred, uh, threw for two hundred and forty-six yards, did throw an interception, no touchdowns. He was sacked four times. Uh, he also ran the ball six times for thirty-two yards. Um, he was twenty-nine of thirty-nine, not bad completion percentage there. Regus had sixty-two rushing yards and a touchdown, along with twenty receiving yards. Uh, Emmons had 45 rushing yards and a touchdown, so that was good. On the receiving side, Zay Jones had three targets, three catches for 57 yards. Keelan Doss, once again, has a great preseason. Six targets, six catches, uh, you know, no touchdown, but six catches for 55 yards. DJ Turner had eight targets for seven catches, 43 yards. And on defensive stats, really not much to say there. There's a lot of people with one tackle. Um, but Javin White, or Javon White had six tackles, total tackles. And uh, Nathan Hobbs, the guy that everyone's been talking about um, in training camp, got a sack on uh, Geno Smith in the, uh, in the first quarter. All right, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the offense, you know, first, and then we'll talk about the defense. Listen, on that opening drive, you know, the line, the... Uh, the things that I came out of there with the offensive line, with the opening drive, was that the offensive line did not look great. Leatherwood looked like a rookie, but he's supposed to. 
Uh, Zay Jones came to play. Uh, aggressive play calling on the goal line is a nice look for the Raiders, first of all. I just wish they would change it up a little bit and just stop. If they're on the three-yard line and in, it just seems like they're not going to want to throw the ball. They just keep running it. And, you know, it's going to take them multiple downs to, to get into the end zone. And, you know, during the regular season last year, that happened a bunch of times, and they still handed the ball off three times and, and kicked the field goal. Um, I hope John Gruden learns from that and realizes that even though they did it this time and it worked, that it's not going to work all the time. And hopefully he can spread the ball out a little bit more. Um, you know, as the game went on, the offensive line played okay. Uh, but let's remember that Incognito Miller did not play. I also believe Denzel Good did not play. Um, you know, Leatherwood, like I said, looked like looked like a rookie, which is okay. Uh, John Simpson had some okay, you know, blocks, but not some. He had some times where he just did not look good at all, and he was part of the reason the interception happened because the guy he was blocking ran into uh, Peterman when he was throwing and kind of ducked the ball a little bit and ran landed right in the Seattle guy's hands. Um, so you know, I, I just. John Simpson Jr. Is, is a big is a big question mark for me because I really thought he was going to be one of those guys that would be able to take over after Incognito retired, which I thought was going to be last year, but I'm guessing that Incognito and the Raiders both realize that they need him to come back because John Simpson's not ready yet and none of the guys they have are ready yet. But that's okay because we're still in preseason, we're working at it, and maybe John Simpson just needs another year as a, as a backup to learn more about the system and all that. Um, I was a little surprised by the play calling. 39 pass plays, 30 design runs, and then uh, 6 QB scrambles. But, uh, you know, more passes than runs? Okay, what is John Gruden trying to show? But, hey, let's see. Because when you can't even drink a Josh Jacobs in there, if you don't give them their touches, I don't know what you're doing. Because they're probably, besides Darren Waller, they're probably the most solid players we have on the offense that will continue giving us production week in and week out. So hopefully that it doesn't, it's not obscure. Like 39 to 30 is not that bad, but I don't want to be like Kansas City where it's 45 to 15. You know, I'd rather see a pretty much 45 to 55 running more than passing because that's just our, honestly, that's just what we're better at right now. You know, but who knows? Because the chemistry with the quarterback and the receivers, second year guys, you know, which, um, Renfro, Waller, it, it's just the sky's the limit with this offense. It really is. Um, you know, Zay Jones, Cleveland Doss, and DJ Turner all look good. Um, but if I had to, you know, guess, I'm thinking that, you know, Zay Jones is going to make it over Doss. And Turner, Doss will probably be on the practice squad again. Um, you know, Turner, I just don't think he'll make the team. But, you know, the running backs looked okay as well. You know, they were effective. Um... You know, it was just the offense was fine. I mean, they scored 20 points. You know, they rotated in backups and starters, starters, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, guys like Zay Jones and Cleveland Doss, they should be making those plays because they've been here for long enough. Uh, and they've been in the league long enough. I just hope Zay Jones can get over that hump because, you know, in college he was so goddamn good. And he caught the ball so much for East Carolina State, for East Carolina and I'm hoping that he can get over that hump and, and start playing like he did in East Carolina. But from here, from when he's on the Raiders now, when he was on the Bills, just, I don't know. I don't know if he just doesn't have it or, you know, it just seems like during training camp and practice, him and Carr always have that chemistry. But when the games come, it's just not there. And I don't know what the deal is there, but if I had to guess, between the three of those guys, even including Marcel Aitman and Stoner and stuff like that, I would guess that, you know, Zay Jones is the one that's going to make the team over any of those guys. All right, let's move on to the defense here. Okay, let's look at the positives here with the defense. They only allowed 194 yards total. All right, that's pretty damn good. 68 rush, 120 pass. Um, the enthusiasm on the field for the defense was awesome. Awesome. Because you saw Abram, Robertson, Hobbs, Morig. Uh, Gillespie, all those guys getting pumped. Arnett getting pumped. That defensive line with Furl and, and Philon and Thomas and, you know, all the, and Vickers and 
they were just so pumped to be out there. So to see that is very exciting. Um, the only difference is there's a lot of guys that were out there that aren't the starters. You know, I mean, Ngakwe wasn't out there. Nassip wasn't out. No, not, not Nassip. Um, Crosby wasn't out there. And neither was Hankins. And, and McCoy as well because McCoy is injured. But, you know, he's probably going to end up close to a starter by the time the season rolls around. Um, you know, they only allowed seven points and it was on a bogus play where just someone forgot their, you know, in the third quarter, which is a okay to happen in the preseason in the third quarter, but not to happen during the regular season. But then again, you're dealing with guys that probably aren't going to be starting for the uh, Raiders going into the season if they're playing in the third quarter of the first preseason game. Uh, Cleveland Furl looks like he knows that this is his last chance to be on the Raiders because he looked better, didn't look great, but he looked better. Um, but he was kind of flying all over the ball, trying to make it seem like he was there for every play. Um, you know, but overall, I still just, I'm never going to be a fan of Furl because of where he was picked, but I want Furl to be good for the team because I just don't see Mayock and Gruden letting go their first ever selection until they have to. And I don't see them getting rid of him this year, but... We got to see something because he's got. I think he's got a, less than ten career sacks in two years, two or three years, and uh, that's just not going to cut it as a guy who got picked fourth overall because you don't want to be labeled as a bust on his end. But a guy that gets picked to be, you know, a staple of the defensive line, he's really not. And you know, was, he had two sacks last year and they were against the Jets. Um, but you know, his role might totally change, and I think it will especially with the addition of Ngakwe, um, you know, and the maturation of Crosby and Koontz and, and stuff like that. Nathan Hobsack was pitcher perfect. I'm loving that this guy has been a, a camp dream, and he's been killing it, and then he gets a sack in his first game. Good for him. Um, can't be upset with that at all. Uh, looks like Nathan Hobbs might have a, an expanded role with the Raiders this year, which is exciting. Because you try to find those diamonds in the rough, and, and this might be it. Um, you know, Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson, Nassip, Phil on Furl are all fighting hard for the defensive line. Um, I just think that, like, Solomon Thomas, Jefferson, and Nassip are, and Furl are all have really good chances of making the team, and, and Phil on doesn't. Um, but, you know, it's good to see them kind of swarming around and all that. And it was good to see a lot of people out there. You know, White made a lot of tackles. Uh, Tanner Muse was out there. Richardson was out there. Darren Lee was out there. You know, there's a lot of talent out there. And the Raiders have a lot of, you know, they got a lot of decisions to make by tomorrow, Tuesday, um, on who they're going to get rid of uh, and keep going with the team going forward. Uh, some negative things about the defense. Listen, as hard as the defensive line was playing, the QB pressure was not that good. Again, still. They only had one sack, and it was with Nate Hobbs, which is a defensive back. Um, but let's be honest, you know, in Gakwe, Crosby, and Hankins aren't out there. Um, but still, you know, the the one thing the Raiders have been terrible at since John Gruden has been with the Raiders is sacking the quarterback. And once again, even though they didn't get many yards with Seattle and stuff like that, they didn't get that much pressure on them either, as much as I would like them to get. But then again, their premier guys aren't on the field right now. Um, and a couple other things that I wanted to say, uh, you know, Arnett still has a lot to work to do. Damon Arnett, you got a lot of work to do still, brother. Uh, Morgan Gillespie look like rookies, which is fine, because I don't think either of those guys... Morgan might end up starting... But I might you might see Carl Joseph start or even God forbid Don leave it, but uh, you know it's just something where I just don't think that Gillespie's going to start right now, but uh, Morig might. And then finally, I mean, uh, let's be honest here, Raider Nation, optimistic Raider fan here, pretty much like the Twitter handle. But uh, were the Raiders good on D or with Seattle that bad on offense? They didn't have any other starters out there, and you know their offense is okay. You know, they can't really run the ball that well, but if Russell Wilson was out there, it would probably be a different story. So, But then again, it is preseason. We don't want to get too upset about it. We don't want to get too excited about it. But that's my opinion of the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Do me a favor while you're watching this video. Remember to hit the like button. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Top it below. 
on your thoughts of you know what what you thought with the game and stuff like that. Also, I have liked the reception of the uh, Big Tuna gets personal, you know, with the addiction stuff. So I'm glad you guys have taken a part of that and continue doing that. There will be a new video up here shortly about that where I get into my childhood. Um, and all that stuff. So, we'll see you guys soon. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day. Stay safe. Stay, uh, active. And as always, let's go Raiders.